here is Poppin' Playboys. Welcome to the channel. For all the new people, what's poppin'? My name is Sean. This is my 2015 Honda Civic SI. In today's video, we're gonna be installing a brand new Action Stage 3 clutch. You guys are probably wondering why did I get such a strong clutch for a car that's only full bolt-ons in 85? Well, that's because I am going turbo in the future. So I just wanna get the clutch done so I don't have to go do it again. Phase 3 clutch, I did go with a light and flywheel, so it'll probably be a little tough for me to drive, but I am going to get used to it, and I've driven a car that had an action action stage 3 clutch, and it wasn't that bad, because i driven one that had an Ironman clutch, and that one was, like, terrible, but this install is going to be a very time-consuming install. If you guys don't have time to do this install, I don't recommend you guys to do it, because it is going to take a couple hours, even probably half a day for you to even do this, and for me, I'm going to take two days, because... The timing is right now 6 p.m. and I'm gonna work throughout the night, but not overnight, if you understand. And then to finish up the next day. But yeah, man, it's gonna be very simple. I'm gonna show you guys all the tools that you need and some tools that you don't need, but it makes it easier if you got them. So you are gonna need at least like two, three cans of brake cleaner. You can buy how many cans you want, to be honest, but I'm gonna use two. Um, just to clean up the trans and clean up my uh, my disc and all that stuff. So one one can is gonna just be for the end, I mean, just for the trans, and then the other can is just gonna be for like the clutch, and I can use the rest of the brake cleaning fluid on other things. Also, you're gonna need some um, lithium grease, or any just grease, you can use brake caliber grease. grease. You can use anti-seize grease, which I do have some right here. Or yeah, basically that's it. Um, you need a torque wrench. I have a breaker bar, not breaker bar, a uh, pry bar. I also have my seal puller, my impact drives, impact sockets, all that things to use it to be able to, to remove the subframe and everything that's underneath it. Um, also got my slide hammer and bearing pull, slide hammer and bearing pull, just to remove my uh, clutch bearing. Well, it's clutch bearing? Pilot bushing, not clutch bearing. And also, you're gonna need um, a rear main seal. That's if you want to change yours. Then you're gonna need some thread locker. You're gonna need some special sockets, which I'm gonna explain all as we get to you know that part of the video. And yeah, man, if you want to, you could pick up these these bad boys right here, but you don't. But it is gonna be a pain in the butt. But you do need a torque wrench. Like it's a must. You guys, you guys have to get it. Also, you're gonna need two bottles of two quarts of OEM Honda transmission fluid, just because you are gonna be dropping the trans. And with dropping the trans, it's gonna leak. So you most likely gonna have to change your oil before you even drop it. So change your oil before you drop it. Use that oil that you just bought. And uh, yeah, man, that's pretty much it. Oh, and of course, a clutch. Oh, cardboard too. A lot of cardboard. You get all the cardboard you can. If you have one of these uh, mover mats, I guess you could say, use one of those. If you have two jacks, you both jacks. I have one jack over there, and then I have another jack right here. Um, trying to think what else. Anything else I'm missing? If anything else I'm missing, I basically will put it in the description below, or I'll probably say it throughout the video. But yeah, man, it's gonna be a process. So you guys work with me. I work with you. So yeah, man, let's get it. Let's get this thing jacked up in the air, and uh, we go from there. Alright guys, the so clutch is up in the air, so what you're going to be doing next is you're going to be disconnecting everything that's connected to the trans, even your slave, disconnect your uh, your shifter bushings, um, your shifter cables, all that. Anything that's touching the trans or connected to the trans, even the wire harness all in the back. I don't know if you guys can see that. That little bolt, disconnect that. Um, yeah, everything. Just move everything off the trans. So when you drop the trans, it won't be pulling anything or messing anything up so yeah be really easy to pull it out sorry if the fans too loud you guys i'm trying to speak over it but if you're trying to take off your uh your bushings what you're going to do is want to remove these copper clips move both of them 
uh, this should be able to just push out or if you have a, a pick or a screwdriver let's see if we can use a screwdriver you could just put your finger in there and it should be able to just slide out I'm gonna need two hands for this but yeah we're gonna remove both of those and uh, they should slide out once you remove both of those make sure you take off your sensors there's gonna be a sensor behind there you can remove that one and I'm gonna show you guys what to do next just to remove this whole assembly all right guys so remove your copper pins these are gonna be free as you guys can see now we're gonna remove these three bolts hopefully you guys can see that all right so one there's gonna be another one on this side and then there's one in the back not that one there's another one like right down there you'll see it when you're doing it and uh, once you remove those this whole thing should come up and I think those are tens let me see tens or 12 check right now yeah uh yeah these are 12s and um they should be fairly easy to break off shouldn't use shouldn't have to use any uh power tools to remove those so yeah man yeah man we moving we moving we moving all right guys so cables are removed it was pretty easy no lie um give you guys a tip right now so you guys don't lose your bolts after you, whoa i look crazy on the camera after you remove your bolts put it back in the same bolt holder that you removed it from that's the way for you guys not to lose your bolts um or get it mixed up and and you know forget which one goes where so that's that's the tip put it inside the same hole that you just removed from whoa pause that's on it that's on it real sexual all right guys so now we're in the process of dropping the subframe so what you're gonna do we're gonna remove that nut right there also we're gonna remove this nut right here you're gonna bend that copper pin out remove it and as you loosen up this bolt get it to like the top thread get like a mallet or a hammer and just bang it out and it should be able to come out and uh yeah just leave that dangling after that you should be fine i think i think i don't really, i don't really remember too much but yeah you should be fine after that so i'm gonna do that real quick and uh yeah get right back to you guys all right guys so i got it out using the rubber mallet did not work as i thought so i did switch over to the hammer and it took it right out both sides after you guys remove that next thing you're gonna do is remove this um hopefully you guys can see that Let's see if i get some light on there so it's gonna be three nuts i mean it's gonna be two nuts and one bolt as you guys can see right there it's gonna be right here um we're gonna remove that to separate the hub i think this is what it's called the hub or the spindle whatever you want to call it to separate it and uh you're gonna do that to both sides once you do that you can lift it up or use a pry bar to separate these two and just you know like move it <laughs> and put the bolt back so you won't lose it that's where having the impact gun comes really really useful because bro it, it broke those bolts off like nothing it just and it was all bro best investment ever damn it's dark Ooh, can y'all see yeah so after you guys do that you're gonna head into your car move your seat all the way back uh, let's see if i can get you guys to see that it's all right so this i already did it because i was you know just rushing so this is the steering column that this right here is connected to i can show you guys come on focus on it that in the back see if i could that in the back right there uh come on focus on it yeah that so as, as you guys can see it already has a mark i made my mark longer so it could reach onto the onto the uh steering column like the steering whatever that crap is called i put it on there so if you guys don't have a mark make your mark this is what you guys are going to use to align your steering wheel when you put it back after you uninstall it it's going to be a 10 millimeter bolt and uh it's not a fun one to get to be honest but after you do that leave your steering wheel alone don't touch it this is how my steering wheel is i'm not going to move it i'm not going to touch it just going to leave it as it is so after you remove your steering column what you're going to do next you're going to disable the power steering which is right there you guys can see it's already disabled come on focus on it bruh it's right there it's already disabled um what you're basically have to have to do is you see that white clip come what's why my camera's acting up you see that white clip you're gonna pry that clip up as you're pressing it down as you're pressing the black clip down you guys see when you guys do it so as you guys pry that up it should be able to pop out you got two more sensors on the top that you're gonna have to take out and that's the only sensor you have to take out after you remove those after you remove those sensors, next thing you're going to do is you're going to take out the motor mount, just two uh, 17s, 
well if you have a Hasport Morton route it's 217 it's for stock I don't really remember but yeah if you have a Hasport Morton route it's 217 so just take those two out um make sure you get something to jack it trans not to trans your uh trans something to jack up your engine so get your jack and put it right here put a piece of block and uh keep that elevated because now once you take that off you're gonna head back up to the top to take off the two uh actually like four or five uh transmission bolts that i mean transmission mount bolts that's holding the trans in but um before you do that we're gonna drop the sub it's these four bolts so it's one right here one right there and obviously on the other side then you have one right where is it one right here and there's another one on the other side i'm honestly thinking about switching over to the gopro to make this a little bit easier for me to show you guys but this camera is not doing the best it can but yeah man it's, it's really easy to install i'm gonna leave the link to the video that i'm using to help me uh drop the cell thing and do the transmission to change the clutch um and today well for this part of the video i'm just gonna be dropping the sub because it's already like 11 o'clock so i'm trying to get some rest so i can wake up early to drop the trend which should, shouldn't be hard at all but i always say that it ends up being hard so yeah um i'm gonna do the subframe now because the subframe is ready to get out it's ready to drop i wish i had somebody else here to help me but <clears throat> my girlfriend is at work so one man team but yeah this should be fun this should be fun let's, let's see if i can subframe out wasn't that hard like like i thought it was pretty easy um i did use two jacks and a skateboard if you have any rollers it'll make it super easy to roll it out but yeah i used two jacks um the lower one slowly lower the other one slowly um uh, pretty easy pretty simple uh by the way the bolts that i told you guys to remove i told you guys the wrong one so you're gonna be removing the two ones in the back which is correct but the ones i told you in the front were wrong the ones i told you was the ones that was holding the uh control arm in so you're gonna be removing the ones that's in front of the steering rack so basically this cover is gonna be hiding it so you're gonna bend this cover down which is gonna be under the car and you'll be able to find these bolts and there are 17s i believe and yeah pretty easy to take out if you guys get stuck make sure you guys do remove these bolts if you guys don't remove these then the subframe is not coming out because I did forget to remove those at one point. But uh, yeah, man, pretty much almost done. Uh, just gotta take off the trans, which I'm gonna be doing tomorrow because it's, it's not late, but I don't feel like working on the car anymore. I wanna go eat, relax, and then wake up in the morning and get right back at it. Plus it's hot in here, super hot. It's 89 degrees in here and it's like 11 o'clock. I started working on my car around like nine, so yeah. Um, you can really do the subframe job in like an hour to be honest it's just because it was my first time plus i was chilling most of the time and not really trying to do it i was just chilling like on instagram and stuff but this is really doable in one hour you could do this in one hour by yourself cake easy bro but um yeah tomorrow well yeah y'all yeah, just see tomorrow see y'all tomorrow all right guys so we're back for day number two of removing the trends um yesterday we took off the sub which is over there in the corner uh, I was thinking about cleaning it, like I said in the recent clips, but I'm just going to leave it alone. I'm trying to get this thing done. And uh, like I said before, there's no point in even, even cleaning that because it's just going to get dirty again. So what we're going to be doing today is uh, dropping the trans, which should be fairly easy. I have certain things I have to disconnect, like the, uh, I forgot what it's called. I'll, I'll show you guys, but it's something, uh, what is it called? The half shaft. There we go. I have to disconnect the half shaft. 
I have to disconnect my slave because I still have those two bolts on it. Uh, hopefully, you guys can see that. Yeah, have two bolts on that. And everything else on the transmission is pretty much off, I think. Yeah, everything's off except for the transmission mount, which I'm going to be doing right now. Um, I'm thinking about wearing a GoPro to make this a little bit easier for you guys to see. Or I might just film with the GoPro just because I could get into small crevices with it. Instead of using this camera, it's kind of hard with this camera. But yeah, man, we're pretty much almost done. Well, not almost done. We're pretty much close to being done with taking off the trance. So, yeah, I'm going to show you guys what to do now. And yeah, we're going to drop this trance, man. Let's get it. A little tip for removing the starter. I use the a half inch, half inch uh, wrench, not wrench. I'm so tired already. A half inch socket. Bro, what am I talking about? I use one of these bad boys, a half inch. Um, it's a 17 millimeter socket. This is a 17 millimeter, but it's extended like a like the long version. So I used that to break the bolt loose. And then I took the top off of my owl. I took the top off of my uh, jack and used it as like a breaker bar, I guess you could say, just to break it off. Because it is on there pretty tight. So yeah once you get that bolt remover you're pretty much free from the front of the car now you gotta move to the back to remove the uh half shaft and once you remove the half shaft you start disconnecting all the bolts uh you're gonna move this cover plate the expression plate and yeah it should be a1 yeah it should be a1 after that all right guys so switch to the gopro kind of make it easier to, to show you guys so you're gonna have to remove this starter bolt just this one right here um that's all you really need to remove you can take it out put it somewhere that you remember because once the transmission is out i'm gonna slide it right back inside there and uh i don't actually i don't think i have to take it completely out well i'm gonna take it out just because um when i drop the trans i don't want to have it like back back in and get caught and won't be able to look, drop it so just leave it leave it out you put it right next to you um after you do that Make sure you guys remove your uh, your slave. I just did it. Um, trying to figure out what else you guys need to remove. Okay, that's pretty much it for the front part of the trans. Now I'm gonna do the half shaft. All right, guys. So half shaft is out. It was these three bolts. As you guys can see, I marked them. So can you guys see that? Let's see if I can make it. So those three bolts that's pulled out right now. Um, they do have. A little piece that sticks out like not stick out but that's that's thicker than the rest of the boat so i just made sure i put them back in the same spot i even marked them with top uh this is the what, left and then this is the right so yeah i marked them just in case i was to leave them out and forget where they went so yeah i just marked them in case but i did end up putting them back also you're gonna have to remove these three bolts right here uh this one that i'm trying to point out this one this one right there and oh yeah that's it that's this those two just to remove that black bracket over there well i guess it's a bracket and also when you do that next thing you're gonna have to do is remove your inspection plate where yeah it's right here um i didn't get to do that yet but i think they're like 10s or something like that or 12s so yeah you're gonna remove that and after remove that it shoot yeah after you do that you're gonna have to take off your half shaft and your uh, axle. It's really easy, you have a pry bar. You can pry it right out, it's not tough. Especially if you change your transmission oil frequently, it's, it's not gonna be hard to come out because it's fresh oil. Also, for the same thing for the half shaft. But yeah, guys, we're almost there. We're almost um, there to drop in a trans. We're almost there. All right, guys, transmission mount is out now. All the uh, bolts were 17s, I believe. If I'm wrong, then I'm wrong. I believe the nuts were 17s as well. So there's two nuts here. There's gonna be one bolt that's behind this nut right here. And then you're gonna take out the bolt that mounts up into the mount right here. You can leave the mount in, there's no point in taking it out because now the trance is free. Like, I'm not gonna try to move it too much, but it's free. It's basically just hanging on the bolts. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna take off the bolts and uh, and uh, yeah, support it with the jack, which it's already doing. So yeah, we're almost there, man. Transmission is almost out. All right, guys. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna drain the oil out of the trans, just to make it easier to drop the trans, cause it'll be less heavy. Plus, I think if you don't drain it, it does spill on you. So yeah, make sure you guys unbolt it. Um, I think it's just a three eighths. 
can't see right now. Yeah, it's just a three eighths. Um, yeah, that's basically it. Just break that off and drain the oil. All right, so oil's draining. I think it's almost done. Um, next, I'm gonna go take off the half shaft. Um, I don't remember how many bolts there are, but I think they're like 12 and 10s. So yeah, that should be very simple to take off. I'm gonna watch the video on how to do it because I kind of forgot. So yeah, um, when I figure out how to do it, then I'm gonna explain to you guys how you should do it. So let's do it. All right, guys, Jack. Oh, let me put the music down. Oh gosh, I put it up. All right, guys, so transmission is out. Woo, that thing was not very easy doing it by yourself, but it's definitely doable. Um, basically, I used the pry bar. Pry bar. I used a pry bar to just pry it out like push it out um try not to scuff it like i kind of did but it's still gonna seal pretty pretty fine so um use a pry bar use the smooth side that you're gonna pry against so don't pry like this pry like this against the engine i guess and i guess it uh it comes out easier but yeah um i got it out everything looks nice oh i almost dropped the camera boy um that needs to be changed because that thing is not not smooth at all um dirty as hell too Ooh, yeah this is this is this is dirty so what i'm gonna do now i'm just gonna clean up the trans before i even try to touch the clutch um i'm gonna be using some brake cleaner brake cleaner is gonna take all this out pretty damn easy i might spray on a rag and wipe it or i might just spray it on it and make sure i don't touch the the seals because brake cleaner will like make that brittle like really fast so make sure you don't do that um after that bro everything looks good dial pins look great this one come out pretty easy this one kind of stuck but yeah they look good they look good five minutes later all right guys back on the gopro so what i'm gonna be doing now is actually just clean out the trans you can see how filthy it is in there. Um, I'm gonna tape this up with some painter tape just to make sure that I don't get no brake fluid on it. I mean, um, bro, I'm so tired to make sure I don't get no uh, brake cleaner on it. So, yeah, I'm gonna clean this up real quick, show you guys how, how it looks after. As you can see right now, it is definitely, uh, definitely really dusty. Alright guys, so I don't think I mentioned how to remove the clutch fork. So basically it's on the clutch like like that. And then you have your pipe bearing right there. Oh wait, wrong way. Sorry. So it's on it's on the uh what's called like that. So basically it's like that. On the transmission like that. All you gotta do is just basically pry it off or pull it off coming straight towards you and it'll pop off. And to remove this clip, you just squeeze the sides and pull it out. Um make sure you guys clean as well. And when you're putting it back, make sure you guys get some lube to lubricate right here. Put a good like dot of it, not even dot, like a good dab of it. Put some on this right here, I forgot what this is actually called, but make sure you put some grease on it too. It makes it real easy for it to slide in. Um, make sure you guys lubricate your, uh... bro, I'm, I'm losing, I'm forgetting everything. Forgetting what everything's called, but yeah. Make sure you lubricate this, lubricate the, the shaft, the spine, whatever you wanna call it and yeah don't put too much you want it to be a very thin layer because if you put too much it might get in the clutch and then now you're gonna have a slipping clutch and also make sure you guys clean up your trans this is how mine's looking it's pretty clean now it was looking filthy like super filthy but this looks way better but yeah um now i'm gonna show you guys basically what you're gonna do you're gonna have to take off all those bolts that's holding in the clutch and my stock clutch don't actually look that bad i thought it was gonna look terrible well, it looks pretty decent it looks pretty damn decent well i can't really tell because i haven't broke off the bolts but i'm gonna do so right now and uh see what they look like all right guys so it's been a couple hours but i did make some progress um i did remove the stock uh clutch uh, the stock clutch and the stock pressure plate um to remove those it's these bolts oh don't drop everything it's these bolts right here the pressure plate bolts and those take a special socket it take a 12 point uh 10 millimeter socket to remove those don't use a regular six point socket because you will strip it um they're pretty easy to break off i have to read up on the specs that you use to torque them back because i don't know so i'm gonna let you guys know that later in the video 
But yeah, now I'm gonna remove the flywheel bolts, which are 17s, 12 points. And it should be fairly simple to remove those as well. Um, I'm gonna use a breaker bar and not like impact drill because I don't want nothing to break. So use a breaker bar and just snap those off real quick. And yeah, um, these bolts are torque to yield bolts, so you're not supposed to reuse them. But uh, I see a lot of people reuse them at least once, but they use uh, they use thread locker on the on the threads, so it won't back out when you know when you put them back in and stuff. So that's what I'm gonna do. Um, I'm gonna do that when I'm actually reinstalling the clutch. But yeah, so far so good. Halfway there, basically um, after this, taking out the clutch, flywheel, yada yada yada. Everything else is putting like stuff back. There's no, there's nothing else getting removed after that. So we're almost there, man. Almost there. All right, you guys. So flywheel bolts are on. Flywheel is on. Um, this is the sequence I did it in. You guys can copy this if y'all want. It's one, two. Well, you guys should just look at it. And you gotta torque it to 91 foot pounds. Um, some people just torque it like straight to 91. I don't like doing that because I'm afraid. So I did 30, 60, then 91. So yeah, man, they're all in. Have fun torquing them because they're they are serious. Also, before you guys even like install the bolts, make sure you guys add some thread locker to the threads if you are if you are reusing them. Because if you don't, they will back out. So I did add a pretty good amount of thread locker. I start from half and I go all the way back down to the, uh, the end of the thread. So when I tie in it, basically the whole thread has it. And I put a good generous amount for all eight bolts. I'm tired now because I literally just torqued to 91 from from 30 and uh boy that's something that's something serious um also make sure you guys when you guys install it you uh hand tighten it first before before you go to torquing because uh you don't want to strip nothing but yeah i hand tighten everything got it nice and snug and then i started torquing and uh, yeah bro it's hot bro I, it's 91 degrees outside right now i'm in the dang garage with a fan but yeah, flywheel, flywheel's on. Now we're gonna put the clutch, and actually after the clutch, we just throw it back on. Throw everything back on, we should be ready. And I hope I have no problems, bro. I hope, I hope I did this install right. So, so yeah, let's do it. Oh, also, when you get the flywheel on, make sure you guys place some brake cleaner on it. Um, you don't want it to be greasy from your hands and stuff. So make sure you guys throw on a new set of gloves, and then, and then spray it down with some brake cleaner. And you should be good to throw on the, the clutch all right you guys look at that action clutch is in man gotta show some light on that thing boy hold on where's the light dang dang action clutch is in i left a little message full send hopefully everything is fine it did make the little pop noise so i can show you guys right now if we could get it in okay it's in it was our pop it means everything's aligned so yeah man um we got spring on the pressure plate bolts here's the spec i did eight pounds first then i went up to 19. um here's the graph that i did well layout so it's one two you guys can see it pressure plate flywheel um yeah man so now we're gonna put the trans on that's gonna be fun because i'm doing this by myself all right guys so i'm about to clean up the floor move everything move that cardboard and make sure i can line this up right um i've been confused with the boot because like my boot is ripped and i don't know how important that is but i don't know how to line it up i honestly don't and it's kind of annoying me because i was ripped and i don't want it to give me any issues but um when i get the transmission on i'm pretty sure i could just pop this out even when it on so yeah we're gonna see how how this thing does all right guys so i just want to make sure I, I say this before you guys even like attempt to put on your trance but if you did lube up your uh clutch fork make sure you guys lube it up lube up your spines so lube up the where your throttle bearing slides lube up right here like behind this of the clutch fork lube up the ball that's holding the clutch fork in um well not holding but that's what it clicks into lube up lube up where your uh clutch slave ball i guess you call it goes like which is right here lube up your uh your axle seal just a little bit not too much but yeah just make sure you lube up everything everything that needs to be lubed so now all i'm gonna do is just put the trans on that's gonna be very very fun so 
let's get to it. All right, guys, so everything's back to normal. We've got the trans mounted back up, the subframes mounted back up. I'm gonna give you guys some tips on when mounting up your subframe and your trans. Um, if you can use two jacks for your, uh, for your subframe, it makes it like 10 times easier. Also, for your uh, trans, if you can lift it up, you could you could put it in basically. Um, also, if you do have a if you do have that, that spare jack, you can use it and put it like in front of your legs and get underneath the trans and I have somebody jack jack up the trans as you as you like align it and push it inside for it to get inside the input shaft. But yeah, man, it was wasn't too hard to do it. It's just very time consuming. Um, also, you don't want to you want to make sure you don't bend your pressure plate when you're doing it. So make sure you get the trans lined up like like where the uh, input shaft is before you try to push it in. Because if you push it in too hard, you could bend your pressure plate and you're going to be messing up your clutch. But um, for the subframe, here's a big tip. So I don't know if you guys can see that. Yeah, you guys can see that that bolt right there is, I guess you could say like the alignment tool. Not the alignment tool, but like the alignment key for it. So if you get that to line up, you can basically get every other boat to line up. And it's pretty easy. Also, um, use two jacks for that. Jack up one side as the other person jacks up the other side. Or if you're by yourself, just jack up either side at the, you know, different different times. And if you have three jacks, it's cake, bro. Cake. Um, what I did, I used two jacks and I used my, uh, my scissor jack in the trunk. And that made it super easy to install. Uh, literally took me like I guess you could say like an hour and not even an hour probably like 45 minutes to install it And yeah, man after that make sure you mount up everything make sure you fill up your trans with fluid That's what I'm about to do right now before I forget make sure you put everything back I'm gonna leave the videos that I use to help me do this install and also the guide This is this is a uh, DIY guide that really came through with knowing the specs of the torque and all that stuff so yeah, I'm gonna leave all that down below in the description for you guys to go check it out when you guys wanna go do yours. Don't be too scared to do it, bros. It's really, really simple. But now, let's get on to uh, finishing up, putting the wheels on, putting the battery back and starting it up, and moving her out the garage because she's been in here for what, three days now. So, yeah, but, man, this install is pretty easy, no lie. Especially if you have somebody else to help you do it, you can literally knock it out in a day. But yeah, let's get on to the video. All right, guys. So, car is on now. Passenger side axle is spinning. Now it's time to go check the driver side. Driver side is spinning. Let's put it in a gear. Oh yeah, that thing's spinning, boy. Alright guys, so now all I gotta do is time the wheels and uh yeah bro go for a little drive or just move it back. But yeah man that 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 clutch grips just from doing that little that little uh startup and putting it in first gear and seeing how fast the wheels went, that clutch grips. Dang. Whoo, alright, so let's get on to tightening and moving this bad boy out. Actually guys, I just thought about it. The car's on the floor and all that stuff, but I just thought about it. I'm gonna save the backing up and the drive for another video so you guys can get my review. So yeah, man. Um actually not even my review, just to see my like my first impressions. So yeah man, I already feel like this video is gonna be pretty long, so I'm gonna end it off here. If you guys enjoyed it, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, follow your boy on Instagram underscore got the soda, and your boys out. Peace.